Sound Design. Yeah. All right, so if you have a constant curvature array, should you use gain offset or EQ offset or something different? I just uh, wanted to show you a couple of tests that I did. So normally I only use gain offset, um, but I'm starting to see that there could be a compromise approach. So you could do nothing, um, but then you would have, you know, if you have a pretty big front to back distance ratio, uh, then that would be reflected in your microphones here. So um, here we've got, you know, about a 12 dB difference from uh, vertical top here in red down to vertical bottom here, this guy, which is the loudest. Now what I like about the gain offset approach is that it seems to change less from front to back. So here in red, you've got vertical top and it's got too much highs. And then in... Um, the pink color, you got vertical bottom, and it has too few highs, um, but you have kind of a compromise. And what I don't like about this approach is now we have these big nulls here. Now the top element is so much louder that the arrival time differences, at least at that microphone, are really exacerbated. So this is what an EQ offset approach might look like. And what I like about this is that it looks a little bit smoother. You know, we don't have these same kind of dips that we had down here. What I don't like about it is that it's different as you go from back to front. So you can see in red here, vertical top, um, you've got, you know, like a 6 dB tilt from low to high. But then as you get to uh, vertical bottom, we've got like a 12, 13, 14, 15 dB um, tilt from bottom to top. So it's going to sound pretty different from top to bottom then this is what a compromise approach might look like. If you are okay with, you know, a 6 dB level difference from front to back, then uh, you can see here there's 6 dB level difference, and here there's about like 6, 7, 8, 9 dB level difference. Um, and we still have these dips, but they're not as bad. And then I think there could be even more compromise from there. So maybe you adjust the EQ a little bit, and you adjust the gain a little bit, um, and you can find something that's even more optimized. I should also say that for a while I've thought that you should not use um, EQ changes like those buttons on the back of the VRX 932 for uh, changing the high shelf because I thought it would screw up the crossover relationship between the two boxes. If you change one of them, if you change that filter, then the phase is going to change and then it's not going to align at the crossover. But then I realized that it really just moves the crossover and you can realign the crossover um, with a little bit of delay if you want to. So I don't think it's that big of a deal anymore, but I do still try to pursue uh, the simplest approach where I have to do the least work later on. Uh, so let me know what you guys think about this. How do you optimize your arrays when you have kind of these constant curvature systems that we have to deal with sometimes? Thanks. Sound design. Yeah.